Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial. If you're watching this video, you would like to know how being a shaman works. So I will be explaining you the most important step, and me and my two helpers will show you how to do it exactly. We will also be doing some example maps so you know how to do it. Like a basic build that you can actually use in a lot of maps. Um, the most important stuff I will be adding in annotations, so you will actually be able to see what exactly we're doing and when exactly we're doing it. And so without further ado, let's just get started. As a shaman, it's your job to help the mice get the cheese into the hole, or reach the cheese, depending on what kind of map you're actually working in. So to do that, you actually have a couple of items you can use in order to build and you have different methods in combining these items. So before we get to the actual building, we're just going to explain to you how to summon an item in general first, and then the different modes of how to exactly use that item. To summon an item, you select it from the selection on the right with your left mouse, and you hold the cursor on where you want to put, uh, put the item. You can see a small circle around you, that's your radius how far away you can actually place the item. So once you've found a spot you want to put the item to, you just start holding the mouse until the item is summoned and there is your item. While you're summoning you can actually see a kind of loading screen under your name and until that loading screen is full, the item isn't summoned. So if you let go, before you actually completely summon the item, it's not gonna spawn. So make sure to just keep holding the mouse down until the item is there, and you're good to go. When building items, like when spawning them, most of the items have two different forms. Well, actually every item has, but you don't need them for every item. So if you want to change the form of the item to ghost form, which means that you can go through the item as well as other mice, but it will still collide with the ground. You select the item, then press the spacebar, and then just summon it. If you decide that you don't want to actually select the ghost item, just hit space again, and it's gonna be normal. So first off, let's show what kind of items we have generally. Some maps will have different items, some maps will have only three items, some will have portals, some will have trampolines. We will just be showing the basic ones and you should be good to go. The first item you have is the arrow. The arrow is pretty much spawned instantly and you can use it to either point mines, to a general direction, or to add nails. Uh, to add a nail, you need to spawn two items, select the arrow, choose the nail you want to spawn, and then just select with the arrow where you want to put it. How to exactly do which nail we will be showing you in a while. The second item you have is the spirit. The spirit is the one item that is not limited to your spawn radius. You can spawn it wherever you want. It can be as far away from you as you need it to be and it will still do its purpose. The spirit will move you, mice or items that you spawn. So, in order to move an item maybe out of the way, you can just use the spirit. Even though the cannon is a lot more effective, but we'll get to that later. The third item is a balloon. The balloon can be used to stabilize builds, to transport mice if you don't know what to do, or if there's maybe one or two people left who can't climb up the wall or the build you made, you can use the balloon to help them. Uh, the balloon too has two different forms, the ghost form and the normal form. So, however you like it, you can choose it. Next one is the rune. Some people have two kinds of runes, yellow ones and blue ones. Generally, you have the blue ones. Blue runes are in a way used to push items or mice. They can be used to stabilize builds, in some maps they can be used to indicate where the ground ends. For instance, um, if the ground looks like it has no holes in it, but you're not sure if maybe there's a trap, 
You can just try spawning an item, for instance the rune, in order to just make sure that everything is okay with the building itself or with the map in itself. Be careful though, as you can see those runes tend to move around a lot. So... They might actually end up messing up your build, so do be careful with them. As everything else, runes can just be removed using cannons, using skills. But as you can see, once they start kind of glitching out, it can be kind of a pain to get rid of them. The next thing we have is the small box. The small box is, well, just a small box. You can use it, for instance, to help mice get on certain builds, like if there's a small step. You can use the box to just make sure that they can actually reach what you want them to reach. The big box is actually going to be used in quite a few builds that we're going to be making. Especially the ghost form, because it's a pretty good starting point if you want to do a build. Because uh, you can build on top of it and you can still make sure that mice can walk through it in case they mess anything up. The next thing is the anvil. The anvil can be used to stabilize builds, especially if you're in any mode that's not really a normal mode. Because the B plank, uh, as we'll be showing you in a bit, can't be used in normal mode, so it's actually really helpful to have anvils around. Uh, do keep in mind, uh, if you have, for instance, 40 mice, one anvil will not be able to hold the weight. There is a skill that lets you uh, put more weight in a single anvil. However, I mean, my anvils are at the ha highest weight and, for instance, if there's a lot of people joining in for events, it still is not enough to hold the full force. So, if you want to make sure that everything is going to be stable enough, uh, just spawn a couple of anvils and you'll be good to go. The next thing are balls. Um, normally, you can only spawn one ball. In my case, I have a skill that lets me spawn several bonds, uh, balls when I select to spawn one. Balls too, like small boxes, can be used to help mice reach certain builds, and there's one map that will let balls explode, talking about vanilla maps right now. And so, uh, they too have different kinds of purposes, but that you will just find out as you keep going. Uh, the next thing we have are cannons. Cannons can be used to remove parts of your build that you don't really like. Like, for instance, you built something, but you're not really happy with how it went. As long as it's not stabilized with a B nail, which I'll be showing you in a bit, uh, you can just use it to get rid of the build. If you tend to play survivor maps or if you have dual shaman maps and actually want to kill the other shaman, cannons will be what you will be using. As you can see, cannons can go into different directions and you can also rotate them. them. However, for instance, if the cannon by default points to the right and you decide to make it pull, uh, like go up, it's not gonna work. So keep in mind when spawning a cannon the general direction that the cannon by itself points in is also the general direction it will go in. You can slightly rotate it, but don't overdo it. And then we have the ice block, which actually won't be working right now because you can only use it once at least one mouse has entered the hole. So the ice block freezes a mouse. If, for instance, you have a person that is just wasting time or screwing you over and you want to get rid of them, the ice block is what you're going to be using. Next thing is the nails. So, as you can see, you have different ways to connect planks to one another. Uh, this should show you pretty well what exactly the different kinds of nails do. Let's just do this. So, the red nail you see here is the stable nail. Uh, the red nail makes your build pretty much stable. Uh, the red nail in itself is stable, however, the plank to the left and right is not. So for instance, if you put any weight on either side with this plank up here, then it's just gonna rotate. So just placing the red nailed plank isn't really gonna help your build, so please keep that in mind when building. If you happen to mess up and you have your red nail up there and you don't know what to do with it, just spinning and spinning and spinning. Just put a second plank inside of it and it's going to be stable. If you're still not sure, third one will do the magic and it's one stable plank. 
The next nail you have is the yeah, uh, oh, by the way, you cannot move the, re the red nail. You press B to summon it, and if you press B again, it's just gonna be the same thing over and over. Pressing B once enables you to place the nail. Pressing B again will just remove the nail. When placing B planks, the best thing you can do is place them on a kind of solid ground and then just build from there. Um, by the way, if you want to rotate a plank, you can just use your mouse uh, wheel. You can just scroll and it's going to rotate all over the place or you use your Z and X keys. They too can rotate the plank if, for instance, you're using a laptop. Um, so the next thing we have are yellow nails. Yellow nails, as you can see here on this plank, can be moved by just pressing the C key, which you use to summon it again. So basically it always is in the middle if you press C once. If you press C again, it's gonna be moving. So keep that in mind. So let's just go down here. Or let's go over here and start doing a simple build. So here's our B plank. And we wanna build from that B plank. So we will be pressing C twice to connect that certain plank there. And we have a pretty stable bridge as you can see. We reached the cheese, we only gotta go back up. You can connect several planks or other items to an already summoned plank. Just be careful if the bridge gets too long to put a B plank in there to make sure it's stable again because as I said the B plank stabilizes your build. And as long as it's connected to something, it's gonna be alright. You can also put nails into, for instance, boxes, anvils, the runes, and balloons. If you summon a balloon with a nail, you can connect it to a mouse. You can also put them into cannons, and if you rotate them, it can be pretty much all over the place. The next thing we have is V-nails. V-nails are the blue nails you can see here. Uh, a V-nail is pretty unstable in itself because, you see, it just dangles. So it's really, really unstable. So what's the good thing about a V-nail? For instance, if you have a build, like, for instance, this plank right here, and you want to make sure that mice can still go through it, you would be using the V-nail. For instance, let's go up here and place the V-nail plank right there. As you can see, it's pretty unstable, but if, for instance, you have the problem of the mice being caught under this spot, they can just move the plank by running against it. You have two more nails, with, uh, which you can find on N and on J. They look like this, and like this. Those are rotating uh, nails. One is clockwise, the other one is counterclockwise. So, if you have any plank, and for that let's just go up here, and put a plank on the other side, there we go, and so let's put an end nail right here, you can move it to like all the other nails, so we put it here, and it's gonna move. As I said, the J nail works the exact same way, just into the other direction. Uh, there's only a few maps where that's going to be really helpful unless you're into tricky builds, but that in general is how you spawn items and how you spawn nails. So next, let's just do a map and connect everything we've learned to make a simple build. So I personally start off with ghost planes. Because like just uh, like that, I can just make sure that mice in themselves can't interfere with the build. So you have several ways to go about it. I mean, we could just summon a plank right here, but that would mean everyone who is on this side won't be able to get through. So we can, for instance, connect it like that. However, that's not really going to help because I mean, well, okay, that was bad because they can go through, but mice won't be able to. So they're just going to be walking here and be stuck. So, let's take a look at that again. So, once again, we start off with our trusty B plank, because it's just how we roll. 
And then instead of spawning the normal plank, we spawn a ghost plank, like this. You see, mice can still go through. And then we just place a second plank, a little further up. And we can go up, without really having any problem. And this is the part where the small box comes in handy, for instance, you can just have it glitch out there, okay. And have it glitch out again. Okay, that box does not like me, so let's just try again. Okay, let's see. So let's start with the small box, see if it likes me now. Now it does, and then we have our build. There we go. And there we go. So now you can go through here in case anyone is on the other side, and you still can go up. That basically works, but if you have a full room and a lot of mice pushing against this plank, it's not going to be too stable. Let me show you my favorite build. The best thing you can do to avoid having too many difficulties with the stability of the play a build is starting with a box, a ghost box as you can see. Then you just use a plank to stabilize it, because if you place the bee nail on it, the box in itself is going to be stable too, you see? Cool. So now we take our trusty plank and just place it up here. And we have the same thing we just did, however we have the box. And you can just place anything at the box in itself, if people would stop glitching my fucking maps. Let's try it again on the other side. That's the nice thing about having people with you because yeah, I love it when people mess up my shit. So let's go again. There's the plank. There's the small box. And you have your build. That build, the box, the plank and the other plank is pretty much the basic build you can use for anything. Any map where you have to get up, any map where you have to get down, this build is gonna work. If you have the ability to do so, you can also just start building up here, that too works. And for instance, you can just do it like this, the V-nail, and people can still get up without really having any issues, uh, having to have any issues with the mice that go to the other side, because they can, as I told you, push the plank. So. That is basically how you build. As you can see, it's not really all that hard. I mean, you can always go into the utility rooms. As you can see up there, just replace my name with your own, and you're pretty much good to go. In a little follow-up, we will be adding some examples for maps, so you can see how exactly to do certain maps. But this is basically how you build, so as you can see, it's not all that difficult. If you have any questions, feel free to hook me up. I will gladly answer them for you, and otherwise... Good luck being a shaman. Bye-bye.